So welcome back one more time. This is uh, video six in this series. We're going to take a look at creating a basic ambient occlusion render pass. Uh, remember this scene, this uh, we used back in um, video two. Uh, I've got sort of my whole scene rendered out here with my little flag and my glass thing and my, you know, whatever the heck this is. Um, and so uh, what we're going to take a look at here is uh, how I can now create an ambient occlusion pass to composite with this. So this is my base image. This is what came from my master render layer. Uh, I'm going to take this image, uh, and I've actually already got you know an image version of this. These are all already saved out uh, here in my uh, render layers. Uh, I'll be able to use these for compositing purposes in just a few minutes. Um, but uh, let's just go ahead and uh, just for uh, our purposes, I want to get these images loaded up so that we can use them inside of Photoshop where I'm going to do a test composite in Photoshop before we start applying these ideas into After Effects. So uh, here I have my uh, master image. This is uh, my master beauty image. I'm going to bring this into Photoshop. There it is. Uh, here is my reflections image. I'll bring that into Photoshop. There it is. Here's my specular image. Awesome. Bring that dude into Photoshop. That's right there. Uh, my diffuse, my direct irradiance. Let's take those into Photoshop. I've got that sort of all loaded up. And then I even have my alternate layer, my uh, alternate master beauty layer, my alternate reflections layer, and my alternate specular layer. Let's bring those in before we forget about them. So I've got all of them here. They're all in Photoshop. We'll come back to those later. I'm jumping around views here in my uh, Mac setup. So I'm ready to go. Uh, I want to create a basic ambient occlusion pass. Now, occlusion are our deep shadows. Uh, ambient occlusion is our deep shadows, so these sort of uh, gradient properties. And a good occlusion pass should be mostly white with just a little bit of gradient where it's darkest. Uh, so here's an occlusion pass for this shot, which we've been looking at previously. Uh, here is my occlusion pass. For this other shot, uh, I made the occlusion pass darker here since he's closer to a brick wall, uh, so he'd be a bit darker. The rest of this is really no occlusion in my open field because it's open to the sky. There's nothing really blocking those shadows. So this is the property that I'm trying to uh, create here. And what I want to do is I want to apply occlusion to this, uh, this scene that I have. So uh, I'm going to take this, and uh, I'm going to take all of my geometry in this scene, I'll go into my hypergraph and uh, grab all of my geometry. Here are my objects. Here is my backdrop. And here is my little flag piece. I don't need any of my lights for this. I'm just going to grab these elements. And I'm going to create a new render layer called layer 1 in this case. You see my, my lights are not in this uh, render layer. Don't need them for occlusion. I'm going to double click on layer 1 and rename it AO for ambient occlusion. You can also just call it occlusion if you like. Uh, AO is my preference just because it's shorter. So in this layer right now, it's, it's pretty much just a duplicate of the master layer, except, well, it's my occlusion layer. With this uh, occlusion layer, uh, I'm going to go into my render settings. Now, this... Uh, all my common stuff is correct. Uh, all of my passes, I don't need to use any of my other passes that I was using previously. I don't need uh, the diffuse, direct irradiance, reflections, and specular. I've already got those rendered out, so I won't need to reassociate any specific render passes with this. Uh, in features, however, I already calculated final gathering, which was the bounced illumination in my scene. I already calculated that in this uh, shot. So I'm going to turn off Final Gathering in this Occlusion Pass by right-clicking and choosing Create Layer Override, and I will uncheck Final Gathering. This way, when I render the shot, I don't have to wait extra time for the Final Gather process to take over. And I'll just close this out. The Occlusion Pass is pretty much one big shader override. That's, that's how this works, and I've got some specific problem cases here that we're going to have to deal with in the next two videos. I'm going to do a basic occlusion pass here. We'll spend a whole video on this guy and then a whole video on that guy and we'll see if we can sort through some of this. So I'm going to create a new material in my hypershade. Rendering editors, hypershade. There we go. 
I'm going to go to surfaces and I'm going to create a new surface shader. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to take this surface shader and just rename it occlusion material one, or in this case, occlusion mat one. So I know what this is. And I'm going to assign this occlusion material to everything in my scene. Just drag a selection over everything and assign this to all of my objects. It's going to take a second. There we go. All of this is going to be black. And I realize my background is not selecting because I have this hands-off layer. It has been locked down, so I just need to select the background and drag my occlusion material onto there. Because again, it's hard to see what's going on. I'm going to turn on wireframe on shaded so we can get a better look at our elements. And uh, I'm just going to very quickly as well put my foreground elements on a display layer. You don't necessarily have to do this, but the reason why I'm doing it is so I can give them like a yellow wireframe so you guys can see what's going on in the video. That's the only reason why I put them on this foreground layer. Otherwise, with no wireframe unshaded, you're just looking at a big black emptiness. And so we want to make sure that we can see all of our stuff. So here's my, uh, my render layer. Here's my occlusion layer. If I was to render out this layer right now, uh, as you could pretty much guess, here was my master layer. If I render out this layer, it's just going to be all black. You know, nothing. It's just completely black. Well, back here in my hypershade, I actually want to add a texture into my occlusion material. So in the mental ray, section in my hypershade under the create bins, uh, the create section, not the bins, but uh, the create area. Uh, I am going to go to mental ray textures and I'm going to choose MIB AMB occlusion, the mental images base library ambient occlusion texture node. And I'm going to take this texture and I'm going to apply it into the out color of my surface shader. I do this by middle mouse dragging this texture node right into my surface shader's ambi uh, out color node. So that'll connect that up directly. Um, so again, one more time here so you can see this. Uh, first, I select my occlusion material right there so I can see it in my attribute editor. Then I middle mouse button drag the uh, occlusion node right onto the word out color and that's going to hook that up. And I'll select my occlusion texture and we can take a look at its properties. So before I um, change any of these properties, let's do another render and take a look at what this has actually given me. This is now giving me my deep shadows or my contact shadows, but there's a couple problems with this. One, it's very gray, which is going to mute all the colors in my image if I don't get some white into the shot. And two, it's very noisy. These are my main problems so far. Let's address these problems first. To get rid of the noisiness, what we have to do is up the number of samples in this texture. So there's only 16 samples right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this 50 samples. That's a number that I usually go to. It's dependent on the resolution of your render, to be quite honest. But uh, at 50 samples, uh, while it will cause the render to take longer to generate, this often seems to be just enough to make this become smoother. So I up this to 50. Let me just drag a selection over a region and hit render and uh, you'll see what happens here. That's quite a bit smoother. We don't notice that noise. It's still a bit noisy but I think this is pretty acceptable at this point especially because when I clamp down the amount of gradient all of that's going to contract even further and I think this is probably going to be pretty good. Now the second thing is it's pretty gray because this deep shadow is extending out too far. It's extending way too far into the world and we want to clamp that. That's this max distance value in the occlusion node. The max distance by default is set to zero, which might be kind of confusing to you because zero might seem like, well, why is there any shadow at all? Shouldn't the black just not exist? Shouldn't it all be white since the distance of that spread is set to zero? Well, with mental ray, zero, as uh, it is in many cases, uh, doesn't actually mean zero. Zero means that mental ray is coming up with its own value, and uh, it's just sort of making an educated guess at what it thinks is going on. A true zero would be 0 .001 in this max distance. Watch what happens when I render out with a 0 .001. 
this is all white. This is no spread outwards. So I'll start off with 0 0.001 and then work my way outwards from there. Oftentimes I start with a good whole number. Like, why not start with one? That seems like a pretty good guess. Uh, this whole process becomes a guess and check where I choose a number and I extend it outwards until I get the shadows that I want. Here I'm starting to see some of those core shadows come in, but it's a little, uh, little light still. Uh, I'm going to up this to a value of 5, and again, I'm just, you know, guessing and checking here. I'll drag a selection on my render. I just dragged a new selection here, so I could see a little bit uh, lower onto uh, the shot. And wow, that, this now I think looks pretty good. This is a good core shadow. Uh, it's got just the contact shadows that I want. It's actually still a bit noisy. So what I'm going to do under samples is I'm going to up those samples to 75 and uh, just do one more render on this as soon as my computer catches up with what I'm up to. Just do a save in case anything happens here. I'm pretty paranoid just because I've got Maya, After Effects, Photoshop, and my screen recording software open. So I want to make sure I'm saving frequently. I'll do my one more render. And this is a really good occlusion pass. This is a really solid basic occlusion pass. Now, if all of your objects are solid geometry, you are done right here. However, I have two problems. Problem one, this is not solid geometry. It shouldn't be rendering out fully solid. Same with this piece. It's cut out with a transparency map, and its cast shadow is a little bit weird as well. I have to make sure that these parts cut out to the best of my ability, and that's what we're going to cover in the next two videos. Now, before I'm done here, let me just go ahead and save this image. I'm going to save this out to my... Uh, I'll save this to my desktop for right now. Uh, I'm going to save it as a TIFF, and I'm going to call this Occlusion... Let's go here into Photoshop and bring in this occlusion image. We're actually going to spend a minute here before we go into the next videos and actually look at a basic composite using this occlusion. So uh, what I have, a couple of images. Here's my base image. I have a couple of parts on top of this. Well, here's my reflections pass. Here's my specular pass. Here's my base diffuse pass. I could recomposite this master layer using the reflections and the specularity. I'm going to copy this reflections pass, control A, control C in Photoshop, and I'm going to paste it on top of my diffuse background image. Here, I'm going to set this blend mode to a linear dodge add, which is going to put this right on. I could set this to overlay, soft light. I can really kind of choose whatever artistic blend mode that I want. But linear dodge add is going to give me sort of the best approximation of this. Now I'm realizing I didn't actually render out a transparency image here too. So this is not going to come out transparent. So unfortunately this isn't going to come together perfectly the same. Uh, let's take this specular pass. Control A, Control C. That's uh, select all, copy all. I'll paste this on top and set it to a linear dodge add. The additive blend mode takes anything that's black and removes it and takes any color on top of that and keeps it. So here we go. There's my reflections. You can see how it's adding on reflectivity into the surface. And here is my specular highlight. Now again, because I didn't render out a separate shadow pass or anything as well, uh, I do have some things missing and I don't have my refractivity pass and my transparency pass. So those parts are actually missing here from this demo, so I don't necessarily need these elements. I might direct radiance, my color change, and I could use all of these parts for various effects, but um, again, not necessarily needed right now. Let's look at a simple render composite with just my occlusion pass. I'll take my occlusion, select it, control A, copy it, Control C, put it on top of this image, Control V. 
Now, since I have a white background, this is the opposite of what I was doing with uh, those reflections passes earlier. Here, what I'm going to do is use a multiply blend mode, which under my layers in Photoshop, I can go to uh, multiply. And that's going to take anything that's white and make it disappear. Add, linear dodge add, makes black disappear. Multiply makes white disappear. Now what this gives me is my deep shadows. This is what I'm adding into the shot, these core shadows. And this is my occlusion effect. Now here are my problems with this though. Number one, this piece is starting to look more chrome than it is reflective glass because I'm getting a shadow on its bottom right there. That's being cut out with a shadow. And I may not like the way that looks for this glass piece. Here's my bigger problem though, and I'm going to have to zoom in so you guys can see this. Take a look at this flag that I have, which has a occlusion map on it. Here it is without occlusion. Here it is with occlusion. Wherever I had transparency was not being cut out by the occlusion material. You can still see a hard-edged outline right there. I need to cut that out. I need to get rid of that in my material. So that's a problem that I'm going to have to address. And we're going to look at how to deal with both of these issues in the next two videos and create a better occlusion map that cuts out these elements properly. So this has been video six on basic occlusion. Uh, video seven, the next video, is going to be on how to avoid these transparent objects. So stay tuned.